But there's something about Van Gogh's legacy which is much more important than his fathering this or that ism of modern art. Vincent's passionate belief was that people wouldn't just see his pictures, but feel the rush of life in them. Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most credible voice in true crime. Today we're dealing with the letter Paul Gauguin wrote to Vincent van Gogh. Bear in mind van Gogh is still in the asylum. Gauguin has been sort of footloose and fancy free. He's left the yellow house for uh, about a year and a half already. So it's, uh, well, it's a year and three months. And we know the circumstances in which he left. So. This is quite a short letter, so I'm going to read the letter through in full, and then we can deal with a little bit of analysis and um, other other sort of insights that come come from it. So this is obviously written in French, and I'm going to provide you with the actual letter. So you're going to, if you're listening to this on YouTube, you you can actually see the handwritten letter this time. We actually have the four pages of Paul Gauguin's handwritten scrawl to Vincent. And so if you go to that, it, it starts off with, um, let's just get to the actual page. It starts off with Mon cher Vincent, which is um, the French way of saying dear Vincent. So just bear in mind that these are written in a different language. Bear in mind also that Vincent van Gogh isn't French, but he can speak the French language. And again, bear in mind if he was this mentally ill guy, incapable of concentrating, incapable of, you know, putting two thoughts next to one another, he's actually able to receive letters in a second language and also write back in that language as well, and very coherently as well. So... So this is the letter from Paul Gauguin. My dear Vincent, I've looked most attentively at your work since we parted, first at your brother's place and at the Independence Exhibition. It's above all at this latter place that one can properly judge what you do, either because of things positioned side beside each other or because of the neighboring works. I offer you my sincere compliments and for many artists you are the most remarkable in the exhibition. With things from nature you are the only one there who thinks. I've talked about it with your brother and there's one that I would like to exchange with you for a thing of your choice. The one I'm talking about is a mountain landscape. Two tiny travelers seem to be climbing up there in search of the unknown. It contains an emotion a la Delacroix with a very evocative color, here and there red notes like lights and a hole in a violet note. It's beautiful and imposing. I've talked at length about it with Aurier, Bernard and many others. I'll send you their compl all, all send you their compliments. Only Goulamy shrugs his shoulders when he hears of it. Besides, I understand him, given that he only sees material things with a brainless eye. He's the same when it comes to, paint, to my painting over these last few years and understands nothing of it. I hesitated greatly to write to you, knowing that you had just had a rather long crisis. So please don't reply to me until you feel completely strong. Let's hope that with the warm weather that will return, you're going to get well at last. The winter is always dangerous to you. Cordially, ever yours, Paul Gauguin. So it's not a very long letter, but certainly what we get out of this letter is reinforcement for what Theo van Gogh had said to uh, Vincent the previous day in a letter. Basically that there's this pattern where during the winter uh, van Gogh kind of struggles with his health, right? Now bear in mind that Van Gogh kind of had this episode in winter. I'm talking about when he lost his ear, when he was sort of kind of turfed out of the yellow house. That happened on December 23rd, 
which is kind of the middle of winter in France, right? So the other aspect is he's just coming out of winter now, um, you know, sort of March 19th, 20th, and spring is starting to manifest around him. So the winter is only starting to, to end now. So it's basically, it's been two winters where Van Gogh has not been himself, not been very well. And so Bourgogne well, is kind of saying, you know what, um, uh, winter's always not been very good for you. And that doesn't seem to be a reference to mental health or madness or anything like that. And once again, you have ben, uh, uh, Paul Gauguin talking business, basically talking about art and artists and also referring to um, how well some people are regarding Van Gogh's work. Um, in, including the art critic Aurea, who, who seems like they, they're like a, a little bit of a clique, um, you know, uh, Bernard, Aurea and Gogog seem to be hanging around a lot and also with Theo. And Gogog kind of admits that he's been talking to Vincent's brother and you know, in the previous letter, Theo said, you know, Gogar is really interested in this artwork of yours. And in this particular letter, Gogar literally makes a little sketch of it, almost as if to say, this is the artwork of yours that I really like. Um, can you give it to me? Now, once again, this sort of deals with it, that aspect of, um, you know, did Vincent van Gogh sell any art in his life? Now, here's another situation where another artist wants this particular artwork, but he's not buying it, he's trading it. So he basically says to Van Gogh, um, he says, I would like to exchange with you for a thing of your choice. Now, I have no idea what this thing is. I don't know whether it's a you know whether it's going to be another painting of Gauguin's or whether it's some physical thing you know like shoes or a coat or something but um, it is quite interesting again it challenges this idea that Van Gogh never sold an artwork in his life well they, they were certainly interested in his artwork to the extent that other artists like Gauguin wanted it so in a kind of in a real sense, um, Paul Gauguin is basically just writing a short letter to Van Gogh to say, you know, can I have this painting of yours? That That's really all the substance of this particular letter. I mean, it's it forms the body text of the letter. And then he also sort of flatters uh, Van Gogh kind of saying, you know, um, all these other artists are sending you their compliments, you know, that they, they, they're thinking well of your work. Um, and with the exception of one particular artist called Guli, uh, Gulami. You also get a little bit of a sense of Gauguin's personality, where he talks about uh, Gulami understanding nothing of his his paintings and also seeing material with a brainless eye one, one kind of gets a sense that um, that Gogo can be quite tactless and also quite arrogant if that makes sense he, he seems to think a lot of himself and he tends to be well he can be quite derisive of others where one doesn't really get that sense of Van Gogh. If Van Gogh doesn't like something, it seems like he would communicate that in a more gentle way, if that makes sense. He's quite um, rough on himself, Van Gogh, but he one, one can't imagine him using the word brainless or that someone understands nothing. I mean, w we know what he said about Aurier, and he, he, he was... He was um, quite complimentary of Aurier, even when he was saying he disagreed with him, if, if you know what I mean. He was saying that, you know, that he wasn't deserving of Aurier's praise. I'm just saying 
there's quite a difference in the personalities of these two artists, Gorga and um, Van Gogh. Van Gogh is quite self self deprecating, quite humble and uh, modest, whereas one doesn't get that sense from Gorga. And one also kind of gets a sense that Gorga is quite mercenary. You, you kind of get the sense that he wouldn't really write to Van Gogh unless he wanted something. Right? He's not really writing to express any um, real feeling and he doesn't really ma even mention his condition um, except for the, really the last paragraph. He doesn't, he doesn't really say much about um, why he hadn't heard from him for a long time or m much about that. And I think overall the length of the letter is also telling a little bit about the difference between Gorga and say Theo. Theo's letter is is quite a lot longer and it's more heartfelt. Um, Gorga's is sort of shorter and blunter and sort of you know it's kind of a little bit transactional I guess. I personally feel like um, Gorga's buttering up Van Gogh where he says um, I offer you my sincere compliments and for many artists you are the most remarkable in the exhibition. I, I don't know if I believe that. Like, I don't know if I believe that Gogar really feels that way. And, I mean, if that is true, if all these other artists thought that Van Gogh was the most remarkable, then why did Auger only write one review? Right, it just seems it does seem a little bit over the top, doesn't it? So the next letter we're going to deal with will be nine days time on the twenty ninth of uh, March. I may deal with the accidental shooting between now and then, just depending on how other things go. Uh, but something else that I want to draw your attention to, and you guys can let me know in the comments if you want me to talk about this, but it's basically the the, the letter that uh, Theo sent to Vincent on the 4th of October, 1889. And um, so um, around about six months earlier, Theo basically was saying to to his brother, you know, that, that there, there is somewhere that he can go. He can go to the countryside, and there's a doctor that he knows. And, um, you know, uh, and this doctor's been um, recommended by Pissarro, uh, who stays in Ove, Ove Suwa. And so this is kind of an early mention bringing to Vincent van Gogh's attention this little place called Ove, and, and that is where he ultimately ended up. But the point is, this was this idea was floated um, for the first time, as far as I'm aware, on the fourth of October, eighteen eighty nine. And so we we know that six months passed with nothing happening, and so we're going to see whether this idea gets revisited, whether the same names are mentioned again, and you know whether Doctor Gachet is sort of approached. Okay, so my brother does want to come and stay with you. Is that okay? How do you feel about it? Bear in mind, we're approaching the end of March. And by the end of May, uh, Van Gogh had left the asylum and was heading to Paris. So it's really in April and May that, that things were organized and things happened. Right. Okay. Something I might do... On this particular topic in April is introduce you to all so what's a little bit unfortunate with the story is we sort of arrive in all as Van Gogh is sort of being kicked out of all right so we don't really get to know Van Gogh's all that well so in the month of April where Van Gogh is still deciding and arrangements are being made to leave Saint Rami, um, and I mean, we are going to get to know Ove Soir quite well, and I, I also went there uh, last year. So, 
what I'll probably do in April is introduce you to the landscape of around Saint Rami and also in and around all um, almost in a retrospective way as if to say well this is where Van Gogh was and and where he was where he was you know he was he, he'd left it, that behind and obviously when we're dealing with the, the period in Auvers Souar which is um, June and July then I'm going to be providing you with a lot of photos from from that actual landscape so wherever you are in the world maybe you are in isolation maybe you are stuck at home or whatever um, I don't know how long that's going to last I don't know how long um, the coronavirus protocols are going to keep people kind of in a place of lockdown but you can kind of travel with me through these episodes through France through uh, through parts of France that uh, made an impression on Van Gogh and bear in mind Van Gogh was kind of ill you know he, he was uh, you could even say terminally ill and so he was sort of going through these landscapes really for the last time and um, maybe that is why I painted them so vividly because it was kind of a way of saying farewell to these beautiful scenes in in the um, flush of the summer season and I mean we, we're heading now into the, the last summer of Van Gogh's life so I think you can appreciate the the gravity of it when you also understand what's going on in the world right now is is people are some people are entering the, the final seasons of their lives some older some younger and um, we see through Van Gogh how he dealt with his situation if anything he painted more he um, he didn't he could have stayed in the asylum instead he, he wanted to get out he wanted to step out back into the world and um, you know feel the the rush of life through him so I'm not going to take it further than that uh, but wherever you are in the world I hope you are safe and well and um, I will um, I will be putting up a couple new episodes on Van Gogh in terms of the um, the accidental death theory um, just in terms of what Knife and Smith are alleging and obviously I don't agree with it right okay and then uh, just a final image that I'm going to leave you with is from one of the true crime rocket science readers uh, she sent me a photo of um, the murder of Vincent van Gogh a book that I wrote and that's just a book that she's received and is reading and I'll just leave you with that image and I will see you guys next time